When my friends ask me whether I wanna invest in something or lend in something or may have a lender for someone, I'll tell them because I consider you guys my friends. I'll tell you what I tell them. I tell them, do you want my professional answer, my sociably acceptable answer, or do you want the truth? The reality is most people can't handle the truth, but most of the time my friends ask for the truth. And on this channel, I consider you friends, so I give you the truth. And what I wanna tell you about is lenders most oftentimes are lying. Their professional answer is typically one that is so guarded from the real truth it's not even funny because they want to protect themselves against liability. That's all they care about is not ending up in a lawsuit with you. That's all they care about. So I'm going to break it down for you guys and help you reverse engineer the loan financing piece and what banks don't want to tell you and actually what they want to hear as far as your story. See, I fire lenders every day, all the time. If they look at our loans that we put through the process and they don't lend on on it after they've given me their guidelines and say, if a person meets these requirements, we'll lend them the money. If they don't, and they continue to do that, yes, I fire banks and lenders because oftentimes I find they lie too. They don't tell the truth. They're not telling me why they're really turning down the loans. They probably can't. Falls under that professional answer. So you got the professional answer. You've got the sociably acceptable one that'll get you not in an argument, which is what they're trying to avoid, not wasting time or the truth why they're really not doing the deal and care about you guys. And I want you to have the best life ever. So this goes back. I got to tell you, I've sat with lenders at a bank and I've asked them, what would you lend on? You're a bank, you have money, what would you lend on? I'd say I'm a developer. I've developed industrial subdivisions, real estate, all kinds of stuff, businesses. And what would you lend to me? Because I know from a lender standpoint, I can turn $2 into $10 or 2 million into 10 million. So the numbers are incredible. And I'd tell them I could put together any development you want, anything that you would lend on, but they wouldn't tell me. And later I figured it out. I reverse engineered and I'm gonna teach you how you can reverse engineer some of these so that it can help you out. I did do it during 2008. That's when the crash happened. I had to reverse engineer so that I could save my own financial life. Going from $63 million to negative 12.8 million. Yes, the bum that walked down the street was in a better financial picture than Andrew Cartwright. I was $12.8 million in debt. And over four years on April 12th, 2012, I was debt free with zero debt. Now running 14 companies during this time, those companies were dying all around me. Like just croaking. I don't want to bore you with the details. The story's long. I'll tell you a little bit about it at the end, but I don't want to bore you with it. Before you apply for a loan, please watch to the end of this so that you get an idea. I'm going to give you the juice on what's behind the scene, how I have been able to bring you lenders from credit scores as low as 300 FICOs and why, and the lenders that hide on purpose their criteria that they don't want you to work their system, which is what I've been doing for 14 years to help people get funding, thousands and thousands of loans, understanding the system and knowing how to work it on your behalf. The condition of a personal loan can differ from one lender to the next. They all have different guidelines and criteria. But there are a few aspects such as application, credit score, and income that are always elevated by financial institutions with applications that are being evaluated. So we're going to go into what will elevate you even if you have a 300 credit score. What can elevate you to the top of the stack? Before you begin with your search for a loan, you should be familiar with the typical requirements that you need to fulfill in order to show evidence that you can actually get the loan and not waste your time. The application process can be simplified. The information is simple and it doesn't change much, but it can be accepted in a lot of potential programs to help you out. I want to talk to you about five of the usual requirements that financial institutions look for when reviewing applications for loans. They're the ones, the guidelines that we send through and see which ones are really going to tell us the truth because you're my audience. My name is Andrew Cartwright. I love you guys to get money, leverage it and to invest it. That's my goal on this channel. I got the second channel, which is my personal channel for you guys. But making thousands is easy, but leveraging it, that's how you'll become a millionaire and the discipline to keep it invested is what it's all about. And I want you to live the best story ever. I've started 32 companies in 17 industries, bought 17 companies. Please consider subscribing if you like my material, because I know a lot of you don't subscribe, but search me every day. And I'd appreciate it if you hit that like button. It makes a big difference in the algorithm and throw a comment in the comment section. All my information is on socials is in the description as well as loans. If you need
need a loan, 12 different programs for your business, 75 different lenders. Hit the link down below to help you out. So we'll get you in front of the right lenders that can get you an actual loan. So we're gonna dive into this and cover those aspects so that I can help you get what you're looking for. If you see yourself getting a loan sometime in the near future, or maybe you just wanna warm up your skills so that when your credit score is right or your credit score is in perfect or better condition, you can get the loan that you're looking for. One of the most critical elements a lender takes into account when assessing a loan application is the application credit score. The elements that determine a credit score, which range from 300 all the way to 850, include payment history, the amount of outstanding debt you have, and the length of the credit history. I did a video yesterday that covered the different aspects and the ratios of that credit, which is important to understand. Now, some lenders will lend to applications with no credit history. I did another video on that called Ghosts. But many lenders demand applications to have a minimum score of roughly about 600 to qualify. That I'm sure you're aware of. To ensure that borrowers have the resources to repay new loans, lenders place income restrictions on them. Not only that, but lending guidelines and the Consumer Protection Bureau they definitely want to make sure that you can pay back the loan. It's called predatory lending if you can't. Lenders have a difficult time passing people that don't have at least a minimum requirement of income. For instance, SoFi requires a minimum salary, according to their guidelines, of $45,000 annually. So I'm not supposed to tell you that, but that's like one of the things. So just so you have an idea, that could change at any time. Please don't attack me, SoFi, for telling people about your criteria. And Advent just requires a minimum income of $20,000. But if the lender doesn't disclose any minimum income requirements, don't be shocked. Many don't. They hide it. They don't say what it is. They have in the background. Everybody at the organization knows, but that doesn't allow them to give a professional answer to you in regards that your income is not enough. It's just not going to work. You just get denied. Your recent tax returns and monthly statements, paycheck stubs, and a signed letter from the employer are acceptable forms of what we call in the industry proof of income. Your POI. Self-employed applicants can put in their tax returns. A lot of times these applicants show no money earning, which you're going to have to explain to the borrower that there were seller discretionary earnings like your car or other items, food and so forth, that you wrote off on your taxes because you're self-employed, that you really, this kind of income, it's tricky. The percentage of borrowers gross monthly income that goes towards the monthly debt service is known as debt to income ratio. This is in the industry we call DTI. Now that's your debt. That's how much you owe compared to the income and what you can afford to pay back in payments against that income. And we call that DTI. It helps lenders determine whether a potential borrower will be able to make payments on both new and existing debts. The optimum DTI is therefore less than 36%, while some lenders would accept a higher qualified candidate with a ratio of up to 50%. I'll give you an example of somebody that reached out to me and emailed me to credit scores like 436 and 485. Now that's a lendable, but she said she had a car crash. She didn't have insurance on the car, so she still owes for the car because the loan on the car is different than the car itself. Just because you crashed it, if you had no insurance, you still owe the money for the car. So she still owes money for the car. In addition to that, she does not have a job, so there's no income coming in and is looking for an unsecured loan of $5,000. Now, I'm putting together an email string to help people that are in these situations deal with that aspect. But for a lender to lend money based on no income coming in is very difficult. And I feel for her. She's driving around in an Uber because she doesn't have a car, no job, and has debt. It's $10,000 worth of debt, but still, there's no car. So a pretty difficult situation. I'll be putting together a string of answers for people to help them in those situations because it pops up. I've been there. I've done that. So I understand. Now, your lender may request valuable assets to its collateral collateral like this person who has no car. There's no collateral to lend against. If you request a secure personal loan, the collateral for the loan can be a house, it can be a car, it can be something that can be collected back by the bank if you don't pay. I like, for example, equipment in a business. However, other valuable assets such as cash accounts, investment accounts, real estate collections, and collectibles like coins or other precious metals may also be used as collateral for securitized personal loans. Here in Nevada and lots of places, we have pond shops where you can go and you can pawn what you have to get a secure loan. That's basically somebody holding your collateral and hoping
hoping you'll pay it back. And if you don't, they can sell it. Now the lender has the right to take back this collateral if they don't have it in their possession like a pawn shop. But in order to recover any unpaid loan balance, those payments, if you default, they have access to that collateral. They're entitled to it by law. Many lenders demand that applicants pay personal loan origination fees to cover the cost of processing applications, conducting credit checks that cost money and closing, even if they're not a requirement of the approval. It happens. Depending on a variable, including the size of the loan, the applicant's credit scores, these costs can often range between 1% to as much as 8% of the entire loan amount. You may have heard of these. Origination fees may be paid in cash by certain lenders at closing, financed by other lenders at a portion of the loan each month. And they're deductible as well from your tax returns and they're reduced from the overall loan they give you, which is crazy. I borrowed $100, you only gave me 95 cents. Well, we took five out for ourselves. Yep. That's what they do. But they bill you and charge you interest on the dollar. It's just the way it works. Your lender will ask a number of different documents from you, including they got to identify you. So such as your driver's license, your address, and verify that you live there, maybe buy a utility bill and work some sort of verification that you got a job for that personal loan. So let's talk about the, some of the usual documents that they'll ask for that you want to have prepared. To start the lender processing, lenders ask potential borrowers to fill out and submit a formal loan application. In particular, requirements may change depending on the lender. And this happens a lot when we deal with lenders. They say like, oh, we want this and we want this another piece of information. However, in general, you have to supply some basic information about yourself as well as an amount, any reason for the loan. Like for example, I'll show people will say, yes, I have an income. I have a second income, but then they go, okay. The lender goes, you got a second income. We want to see that. And then you don't have it. And then they're like, well, you said you had it. And now your loan's stuck because you said you had a second income, but you can't verify it. So bring up what you can verify. <laughs> Don't bring up what you can't. Each lender may have a different loan application template, while many others will provide full online application processes and should be pretty seamless. So hopefully you don't have to talk to somebody too much because sometimes you can talk yourself right out of a loan. The submission of paper applications in person is also required by a number of physical banks and financial organizations. This is to demonstrate to show that they are at least 18 years old and a citizen of the United States. Most lenders demand that applicants present at least two types of government issued identification. And you will therefore be required to present documents such as a driver's license, ID, passport, birth certificate, military ID, et cetera, as well as you in person so they can verify you. Some are doing it by phone now. And a lender wants to know that you have the resources to repay both the new loan as well as your existing loans that are on your books right now, that they are there for demand your W-2 tax return or paycheck stuff and so on. So you also may think as well. For example, the person that had their car crash with no insurance that owes 10 grand looking for a $5,000 unsecured loan. In that case, that $5,000 would be sitting behind the $11,000 that that lender is aggressively collecting, trying to get their money. So it's really that I'm looking, can they afford $15,000 worth of debt rather than 10? And most lenders demand proof of employment evidence that you have a job and you've kept it for a, little. a recent utility bill, a copy of a lease, all to verify that you live somewhere, a rental agreement, maybe even a voter's registration or a proof of house, rental or auto insurance. They want evidence of an address because they would like to know how to find you if you default on the loan and send you documents. Some of them by certified mail, some of them lawsuits, not fun stuff. So how can you tell if you're even eligible for a loan? Every applicant financial condition is distinct, very distinct and distinctive and personal. Personal. Hence, there is no universal method for determining eligibility for personal loan. However, you typically are required to have a credit score of somewhere of 670, but not always. You can go down as low as 300, depending on your income, source of income, and your debt to income ratio can oftentimes squash the credit score. Some banks don't care. It's in your best advantage, though, to pre qualify, get a soft pull before you go to a lender so that you know the standards so that you don't get a hard pull on lots of your personal credit, which will hurt you. By doing this, you'll be able to get a loan faster, quicker, and have the financial wherewithal to be able to move forward with them. If a lender rejects your request for a personal loan, request exact justification for the denial of the application. Examine your loan application to look for errors or inaccuracies and pay off all your current outstanding obligations if you can, which will help you raise your credit score or move that over to a business credit card like I have videos on 
that I've covered. And check your credit report for air. This happens so often. That'll help boost it and get that second job to boost your earnings. It'll help you with the debt to income ratio. The point seems to always be that you have the option when it comes to getting a loan. I always want to make sure it's easy for you to get funding. My goal on this channel is to help you as much as possible so that you can get and live the biggest dream ever. If you're still watching, if you're interested in Epic 99, it's a business program that I have where I'm buying businesses with my audience. You own 81%, I own 19, provide the equity or capital to get the business started and we'll put it together and make it happen together. Also, please consider subscribing if you're still watching and grab those free stocks that are in the description. There's no catch there other than you get free money in the form of stocks that you can sell and collect and withdraw. Take care. I'm Andrew Cartwright. Love you.